So Sali, can you record? So let's let make several copies, okay? Several recording, okay, sure. I forgot who is the author of the law, but he said that if something can go wrong, it goes wrong. And uh, if something cannot go wrong, it also goes wrong. So, mm. so please uh, correct me if the sound is not okay, if the audio is out of focus, if something happens. Something will definitely happen. Mm. It's a rule. Yes. Mm. So people are coming. Uh, hold on, maybe we should. Uh, uh, hold on. So seventeen. Okay. Yes, seventeen. I think it's enough. Okay. <clears throat> so. So let me start. So the main uh, topic of my today's talk and my following talk would be instantonic theories. And uh, it is something that we developed uh, with uh, Edward Frankel and uh, Nikita Nikrasov more than 10 years ago. <clears throat> and uh, it's also an explanation of what I called the example two in higher dimension. And uh, it seems that it's a very general phenomenon. That's why it will be topic of what I'll discuss today. However, let me recall where we are. It should also be a rule. I'll give, I'll give a brief summary. So once again, H T Q F T is a closed functor from <coughs> cobordisms equipped with PT of geometrical data to tender algebra. So the image of this functor on cobordism belongs to differential forms in geometrical data times something like v star squared times v. The main axiom is i sigma 1 g1, i sigma 2 g2 equals to i sigma g, where g is something that is g1 on sigma 1, g2 on sigma 2. Okay, example. Higher topological quantum mechanics. I belongs to endomorphisms of the space V times forms on R plus. Explicit solution I equals to
Okay? These conditions here tensor algebra of complexes, of course. Closed means that Q plus D applied to I equals to zero. Closed. So a lot of things written in one shot. Okay. Examples. Example number one. Historically, it was the first example. V space and differential forms. Q is D and G is D star. Now this is Hodge star. Example number two. V equal to the same space. Q is the same. V is IV. So here H is Laplacian and here H is LV. And this is a, this example uh, would be and this its generalization are just constantonic theory. Example number three that we studied before was V was was V tilde times C square Q was H zero 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 tilde G was H tilde zero zero H tilde and H what is just H tilde H tilde zero zero. G is probably just one in the corner, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Misprint, of course. You see, I was so concentrated. Thank you. So this is typically called B. This is typically called CH tilde. That is the same as CH. Okay. It is nice to study theory using example three because it is one dimensional analog of bosonic string. Where Q in bosonic string is Q left plus Q right and say Q left is integral of C energy momentum tensor of matter fields plus one half C energy momentum tensor of BC system. So this is the analog of this. And I think that in this course I'll try to prepare example of this in higher dimensions.
Окей. Okay. Now. What else have we discussed? So which is the slide number two? We discussed deformation by width is the same. Consider a local observable such that D of local observable is Q of O1. Sorry, Andy. Uh, can I ask a silly, a silly question? So this uh, uh, example three, is it a one dimensional version of critical string so with 26 uh, target dimension? Good question. Uh, there are subtleties that I don't quite understand at the moment. Yes, of course, of critical string. Mm -hmm. So here up to D O D minus one. That is Q of O D. And then the formation is integral of a sigma of correlator of O D. This is deformation of I of sigma. One second. Okay. We have found that there are peculiarities. So, the current of Q is deforming by, well, it's better to say it, how Q deforms. Q on the boundary is deformed by, to the Q on the boundary, plus integral over the boundary O D minus one. Which is the good news. The bad news is that there are obstructions. As a second order. In the formation. And the origin of this obstruction is typically when two observables try to collide, the abstraction is this integral. This abstraction in d equals one is just O zero squared. So it is obvious that if you have Q plus O zero squared, it is not zero if O zero doesn't square to zero. Okay? We study this in uh, various examples. There is one interesting thing that I would like to add is that there are infrared problems in quantum mechanics.
if you have t and then you try to, to turn t to infinity it would not necessarily converge moreover if you have observable o zero and if you try to integrate it over r plus it could also converge or uh, diverge okay and the last thing that you should know about these abstractions is that peculiarity of two dimensional conformal theory is that so called ultraviolet abstractions and infrared abstractions are the same so called ultraviolet abstraction this thing is actually this problem appears when this time go to infinity so what looks like infrared in conformal theory is exactly the same as ultraviolet so it's peculiarity of two-dimensional conformal field theory okay Later, when we will study theories, we will develop this further. Now, I am coming to the main topic of my today's talk is the instantonic series. So the plan would be as follows. First, I develop them in dimension equal to zero, then in dimension equal to one. And it would be exactly example two, then in dimension equal to two. And uh, it would be Grom of Witten theory. And uh, I would say that it's possible to do it in dimension equal to four. It will be done or something. Like that. And I will show that there are some other th theories that uh, that were missed along the way. Okay, so let me start with dimension equal to zero. In dimension equal to zero, we study the integral representation. Of the delta function. That of course is not a function, that is of course a differential. So it goes as follows. Suppose you have the simplest case. Suppo suppose you have a manifold M. And there is a surface that I called S. Determined by set of equations. Let, let me consider one equation from the beginning f of x equals to zero so 
Then delta on S is such a differential form that are denoted like this such that for any form omega on M integral of M of omega wedge delta epsilon of S tends to integral of S over omega when epsilon is going to zero. And this delta epsilon I will call the smoothened or smeared delta function. It's a question how to obtain this thing. <coughs> It's also called Matai Quillen representative. So if this idea is clear, I'll raise it and I'll start to proceed. So if something is supported on S, it's better to study the expression of the following form. Something like this. However, integral, however, this is not a form, but a function. And uh, the integral depends on f. And we do not like the integral to be dependent on f. We'd like the integral to be dependent only on zeros of f. So, when we rescale f, things should, uh, should not change. Also, such object depends on epsilon. So, it's only the first approximation to what we actually would like to have. So, we need to elaborate, improve, okay? First have something, then, then improve. So, the new guess would be to write something like this. This is already a one form, and now it scales properly. So, this is actually an answer. But uh, it is not clear what is the structure of this answer. So, it's, so first of all, like people used to do in quantum field theory, we would like to put this prefactor to exponent. So, we would like to see it as an integral over some strange ingredient called pi. And, uh, and here we put pi df. And once again, we have this strange factor of one over square root of epsilon. And also, it's hard to take a limit, epsilon going to zero. We need to think a little bit 
and try to put this object one of a square root of epsilon back to the action. So we are clever enough, enough to improve the representation to get this. Okay, now this is nice. Here there is a minus sign. You see, I went in steps from this to this to this to this. And I have something when I can take epsilon to zero and get the oscillating integral representation for the delta function. Also, what I like here is that I have both odd and even integrals. So it is canonical Bayesian integral. So I do not need to pick up a measure. Things would look even nicer if I replace the old mathematical notion of the RAM by a modern one. So in modern notion, D is Psi D over DX. And they'll write it as physicists used to write in coordinates. Okay, good. Now, <clears throat> I'd like to see another thing. Is the result like this one close? You know, from formula B, I see that it is closed because if I apply external differential here, I have df wedge df that is zero. But I'd like to check that it would work similarly for some general reason. Not because uh, df wedge df is zero. Maybe there is a deeper reason for it. And it turns out that I'm, wrong, that I'm right. There is a deeper reason for this. Okay. So the deep reason for this is the following. Let me introduce the differential that I call def differential prime. That has very strange form. It is, it's like this. Then, I will introduce another differential, Q, that is D plus Q prime, that is Psi D over DX. Plus Pi D over DP. So this is a standard uh, DRAM. And this is strange because 
I differentiate with respect to odd and I multiply by even. However, I should not be afraid because this is exactly the run on the supermanifold where one coordinate are axes and other coordinates are p. x even coordinates, p odd, dimension, of course super dimension, is dimension of x minus, I would say number of p. I could call it dimension, but in the super manifold, dimension of something that has odd coordinates is negative. So it's actually a super dimension. Okay, now let us come to see our formula. Let us apply d super to where to IPF I'll get from the second term IPF and from the first term IP BF of DXJ by J. And this is it, you see, up to factor of I that I can put here uh, and here. It's just the same. Okay, let me put your eyes on uh, odd integral. Doesn't really matter. So I found interesting thing. This one is d super exact. So it is d super of i pi f. Now, what about the second term? Surprisingly, second term is also exact. D super of pi p is p squared. So what I have here, I, what I have here is homotopical one. So exact things are homotopically zeros, e to zero is one. And uh, how can I understand this integral? I have something closed, very closed, because it's one. And I integrate along the odd fiber. So this is uh, the standard consideration <coughs> of direct image of cohomology. You have the total space, you have a base, you have something closed on the fiber, you integrate along the fiber, you get a closed form on the base. Okay, so this integral representation turns out uh, quite familiar. Actually, we may see that if you make small changes in F, the integral would not change in cohomology as we expected.
So if you change f to f plus delta f, then s is changed to some s prime. Small change means that they are homotopical. Okay. Now <clears throat> I'll explain obvious generalizations. Generalization number one. You go from one function to the set of functions. Say, let me call them FA. Okay. What should I change? Almost nothing. And here I need to pick up some metric. Now you may ask, could this metric depend on x? And I will say yes, but if metric depends on x, then there should be some additional terms because I know how to modify. Instead of writing this, I will say that I will write this. And I apply Q super here. So that's it. And then one can compute that it, it will have this term and also terms with uh, P, Pi, and Psi. Okay. I have described this generalization. Now, what happens if, so up to now everything was real. Now consider F depends on Z, complex equation. Something that we used to have in algebraic geometry. What would be a good way to modify? Of course, this thing would go to F and bar. And uh, things would be very similar and in the, in the general complex case I will have DPA, DPA bar, DP, P of pi, D pi A, D pi A bar. Product over A from one to number of equations. And here things would be basically the same. Okay, I'll write it in this, in this form. Plus complex conjugate. minus epsilon e p bar. Okay, so I managed to explain the system for both many dimensions and the uh, complex case. At the moment, it was zero dimension. If I would be 
if I put index L here, and index J here, I would see that I could probably generalize it to infinite dimensional case. So, would I generalize it to infinite dimensional case, the sum over A would go to an integral here and here. And uh, it's exactly what I'm going to do after the break. You see, I'll try to keep the schedule. Schedule says five minutes waiting for everybody, 40 minutes, then uh, five minutes break. Okay? So now it's time for the break. Hi, Andre. Uh, I I'm going to talk about this, uh, this B model setup because I think the B model doesn't fit into this framework. Uh, B model, okay. So B model uh, fits to the framework of example one prime. Yeah, so uh, if, if, if you have Dalbo, so this, this would be exactly A model. Yes. And you will see it. Yeah, this A model, yes. It, so, B model is not a, like data function, so. Of course. Yeah. Actually, actually not quite. And it is a tricky point. Yeah. So when we will come to B model, we will see that it will be also possible to write something like yeah. this, because uh, it will be something like localization to constant maps. Yes. But let us do as uh, Senhu says, step by step. Yeah, cool. So at the moment, I'm trying to describe what I'd like to call universal A model. Later on, when we will describe universal B model, it's also in the program to explain what is universal B model. We will see how and how one can go from one to another. And uh, it is, by the way, so I know how to do it uh, using several techniques and most universal is tropicalization. But, so I, I'm planning to explain everything here. So as, uh, as Rova Sukhanov said, people will be more interested if you will uh, explain examples than general structures. Because you are interested in general structures like infrared problems, ultraviolet problems, only after you know examples. So I'll follow his advice. So I'll start with examples, okay? The more example we have, the more structure we could illustrate, okay? So now we are going to examples and then we'll come back to structures, okay? Having examples in mind. Because when I say everything is reduced uh, to Jordan cell, it looks uh, that I'm a bit crazy. How one can explain everything in terms of Jordan cell and the relation to homotopical contraction? Okay, I will look like crazy. So I'll proceed with examples, okay? So, uh, and Andrei? Yes? Uh, uh, sorry, so um, 
Well, some questions. So, yeah, first of all, there's something that, that is bugging me. So, when I, I was watching the recording of your previous talk, and you mentioned something about this in the beginning of, of this. So, you uh, seem to say that when we deform a theory, maybe one dimensional or higher dimensional, by a top observable, then the BRST current uh, deforms by this one smaller descent. And I think we kind of stumbled into that and discussed that there's like one more one other term in the in the Noether theorem. Yes. So that's sort of a perplexing point. Uh, it, it is a perplexing point. And uh, you see, I made some progress in my own understanding of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, it's also a problem that we studied with Kolody Dushenko when he was a student. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, things are coming back. Mm -hmm. So at least I gave you a reasoning why informal theory it goes like this. You may ask, what about functional integral? And you'll be absolutely right. So we need to understand more about what is functional integral, how it is related to examples of theory, and what is going on. In particular, in the example of uh, quantum mechanics of the type three, it was clear the thing goes exactly this way. So it should be just a classical phenomenon even without, a, without doing the path integral, like what uh -huh. is the conserved quantity? Yes, but then, but then the interesting thing is, of course, how classical theory is related is related with uh, with examples. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's it's very important and subtle point. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on, so after we get some examples, okay, we will discuss phenomena in examples. Mm -hmm. So in this example, it goes like this. In that example, it goes like this. Okay, Pasha? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, now I think that the break time is over and I'll proceed. So now let me go to, to a one dimensional example. Okay. In one dimensional example, I would like to study. the following theory that I have a manifold M and I assume that evolution is just the flow of the vector field. So I had this picture before. The Hamiltonian is LV. And <coughs> MQ is D and G is IV. So I have the Hamiltonian picture. But now 
My intention is opposite. I'd like to find Lagrangian picture for such Hamiltonian picture. So what does it mean that evolution is like this? It actually means that we may study the evolution that takes x as a subspace among all evolutions. Okay, so what does it mean? We would like to write down the equation for this evolution. X of t, x of t is actually a solution of uh, equation x dot equals v of x. So it's so equation should have uh, zero as the right hand side. So actually it's this. I may ask could I write it in a better way in terms of differential forms, of course, it is this. So this is equation. Okay, I put here J. And uh, here I see that I have a geometrical data dt. So it's better to generalize it to have more general geometrical data. So equation is omega. On an interval. Okay, so now, now this thing has invariant meaning. I I take derivative of a map. Derivative of a map is of course a one form that goes. Uh, but since it's, it takes a tangent vector and it goes to the tangent vector to the target. So that's why here I have a vector field on the target and here I have a one form. Okay, I explained this. Now, let me write down integral representation. This equation should be valid everywhere on the line or on the interval. So these equations, so coordinates on these equations are of course functions on the line. Functions of the line that are dual here. So, so I'll write my Matai Quillen representative in the following way.
Plus, I need to have fermions. And remember, I had here derivative of the function. And I take the integral. And remember, I had an epsilon term. Let me consider for a moment the flat space. So the metric is constant. I explained how to modify it in the non-flat case. So now let us see what do we have. First, suppose that epsilon equals to zero. Then what I have here is basically this. So this is a term with Lagrangian that determines the phase space. So here coordinates are xj's, psi j's. So okay, wave function. is function of x j's psi j's okay it's what we expected it's differential form now let us come to the issue of of the hamiltonian so Hamiltonian is Pj Vj plus Pi J dvj over dxk psi k. Um, sorry, Andre, so what we are writing is a Matei Quillen representative for what? For the delta function on the path space localized on on yes, the, on the solutions yes, to this. Yes, it's exactly the Matai equivalent representative on the path space localized to trajectories of the vector field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So, what I see here. So this is Hamiltonian. Here I will have presumably a question how to quantize it. So when I say that Pj goes to D over Dxj, I have a subtle issue. How to put it? Before V or after V? It's interesting that in Matalic Wheeler case, there is no ambiguity. However, when I try to do it, okay, is a naive way. I don't know what to do, so most probably. I'd like to do it like this. Put it to the left. Then maybe somebody will explain me why I, why I have to put it on the left. The same thing here. 
this pi are of course d over d psi j and i still have a problem how to put these two operators so actually the proper choice is this You see, why do I know that, that this is the proper choice? Why I don't have this constant term here and potential constant term here? Because quantization uh, is actually an ill-defined uh, problem. The proper problem is quantization. So here I'd like to stress that in my queer treatment everything is predetermined everything is okay when i try to to do it as a quantization of the functional integral i potentially have problem problems but these problems uh, could be resolved if i remember where did i start it from so it's important. It's important subtlety. However, here what I have is exactly LV. Because if I write LV in components, I would say that LV is what? Is DIV. What is what is IV? It is V D over deep side. So when I take this anti commutator, I have no ambiguity. When I say that I am naively quantizing, I have ambiguity. So, I'm coming to the very strange message. And this strange message is that Matai equivalent prescription is better than uh, formal integral because in formal integral we have ambiguities. When we say that we are just writing delta function on uh, trajectories, we do not have any ambiguity. Okay, you may say that in one dimensional case I can go to Hamiltonian picture. However, what is much more important is that when I will go to higher dimensions, I will not have this freedom to go to Hamiltonian picture, but I'll uh, stay with what we call instantonic or matai equivalent picture, namely. The idea is pick up the space of equations like this that have a finite dimensional space of solutions. By the way, I think it's clear that this space has a finite dimensional space of solutions. The space of solutions uh, is parameterized by the points of manifold, of course. For uh, given point of a manifold we have a trajectory so we have, we have finite dimensional space of solutions then we will interpret then we will write down mataic wheel on the representative then we are then we i will identify this mataic wheel and representative with the way how physicists are writing quantum field theory and then we will say that in order to compute something in the theory, you should uh, use prescriptions motivated from a type representative, 
but uh, given on the form that I will explain, okay? So, Andrei, I see the question. So, there was a, an, an additional structure in this Matei Kurin representative that it was D super of, of something. Knowing the structure, does it not help choose the correct ordering? It, uh, you see, this, this structure somehow relates ordering here and here, but it's, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not correcting the total ordering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here I want to comment on what, is, what the epsilon is. So now I, I consider zero V. V could be zero. There are, there are no restrictions on V. So V cannot be big enough uh, so, such that trajectories would uh, blow up. It happens. But uh, small, being small enough, it's okay. So when I take here epsilon and I integrate P out, I'll get I'll get this. So one over epsilon is M. So up to a factor of two. So Matai Quillen leave it. Or instantonically, is M going to infinity? So it is instructive to rewrite this limit also in terms of metric. So this limit, mass going to infinity, is exactly metric is going to infinity. So in some sense, it's an infinite volume limit. So when we will come to sigma modules, it's exactly infinite volume limit. So what is also important here is that first order fermionic system, if you write naturally, does not contain metric. Okay. No metric here. Okay. You see zero dimension is preparation to one. One dimension is preparation to higher dimension. As always. Now, just imagine that I, that I have all this structure. How can I find local observables? Mm. Before I answer how you can find local observables, let me explain why this is already called instanton. It's because uh, people studied particular example when the vector field
people start in this case. And in this particular case, equations were called instant on equations. So it was, so if you consider something like potentials of this type, you go from one critical point of the vector field to another critical point of the vector field. Okay. And uh, So here, it's explanation of the name. So these are gradient trajectories. This is yes. nothing. To, yes, nothing gradient to... trajectory. Uh -huh. So if you look in time, how it goes. So gradient trajectory go like follows. First, you slowly, slowly are leaving the critical point. Then you somehow accelerate. And then you asymptotically come to another critical point. X in. This is X out. So you see that actual movement is restricted in some small region in time. So there is a characteristic size in time of this movement. And all the rest you are still. So that's why people call it as it has, as it happened in some instance in time. And this is the reason to call it instanton, because instance, it's a point uh, in time. So it's the origin of the name. And Andre, is, is it true? I thought that instanton is, is, uh, is kind of originally from the Young Mills world and a completely different example. Actually, instantons were originally fold not in Young Mills, but in quantum mechanics. Yeah. But I, I don't quite remember uh, which terminology came first. So later, we can uh, discuss these instantons uh, in relation to gradient trajectories. But now, I'd like to discuss other properties of the system. You see, if you have a model, you can study these properties, that properties, you can study many properties, okay? But I will study properties uh, that are crucial for me because uh, the question that I asked, I have a system of equations. How to get full quantum field theory out of this data? So I'll be very ambitious. I'd like to say that the space of solutions to this set of equations contains all correlators, all observables and all correlators in the full quantum field theory. Okay? So maybe that ambitious. And then you may ask, how could it be here, I have only finite dimensional space. How can I 
get infinite number of different correlators at different points from this finite dimensional space. You see, dimension of this space is, uh, so in this particular example, is dimension of the target manifold. And the answer is uh, not tricky, but it's, it's non-trivial. Non-trivial thing, uh, thing is that it is better to study the equation of fields depending of a lot of parameters so for each value of these parameters you will have a finite dimensional space that we are calling deformed instanton you can uh, derive it quite explicitly okay but correlators would be derivatives of the integral of this finite dimensional space with respect to infinitely many parameters parameters and that's how you can get infinitely many answers from naively finite dimensional space of solutions so what i'm what i'll try to explain is how this actually happens okay and uh, it works in uh, all dimensions so uh, I'd like to explain what happens. I consider this as something very non-trivial. Maybe because uh, we found it, but uh, it's not me to judge if it's trivial or non-trivial. My role is to explain to you what happens, okay? So let us consider very definite examples. Where M is just R. Okay. And I'll start with the case where V equals to zero. So what I am going to study after all. this integral okay i cannot study exactly this integral but uh, i can study something else you see this integral over all fields okay is not defined however what is defined Suppose I have a differential form omega. And I'll write this omega as omega of x and psi. Then I can consider correlation, correlator of this. I evaluate this at some point t. And here I can integrate, say, from minus infinity to plus infinity. It doesn't matter. Let me compute this integral. It's very easy to compute. This integral goes to the integral over the zero mode so instant on here is x equals to x zero psi 
equals to psi zero. I have dx zero, d psi zero. Everything is constant. I take omega. Solutions are very trivial. X of t. I plug it in. Integral of omega over, over, over r. So if this omega is something integrable, one form integrable, it's just an integral. Not that interesting, right? Now, let me put here one differential form and another differential form. Okay. Once again, I'm integrating over the space of instanton, that is just the target space. Nothing depends on t. So in this case, the answer is still simple. Oh, don't 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 be afraid. Some of these forms could be functions, so you can so it will be possible to integrate it. Note that this result does not depend on t at all. Okay. But uh, you may think, look, we have to find out something like uh, quantum mechanics. And then quantum mechanics correlates have jumps because uh, P and Q do not, P and X do not commute. How can I get something not commutative? Starting from this simple type of an integral. And there is a tricky point. Tricky point here is that in order to see, in order to get correlator of momenta, I can do the following. I can put momenta at some point p3, okay, and consider a small parameter that I need to call somehow. So since epsilon is already taken and t is already taken, I will call this parameter lambda. So, if I take this integral and I consider this integral as a function of lambda, so now I'll erase things. So this integral would be an integral depending on what? On lambda, of course, omega one, omega two, and also t one, t two, and t three. So it's interesting to see what happens 
how does it depend on lambda? Because we will be interested in the first derivative of this integral with respect to lambda. You see, it is clear that fermions decouple. So it's good. Example becomes even simpler. So let us see what is the lambda deformed trajectory. So I group this term together. And I see that the equation, deformed instantonic equation is x dot equals lambda delta of t minus t3. Hmm? I think we can solve this equation. It's not that hard to solve this equation. So x equals to x0 for t less than t3 and x equals to x0 plus lambda, okay, for t greater than t3. How do I know it? I can integrate this from t3 minus a to t3 plus b. And here I have a jump. And this jump is exactly that, is exactly that. Okay? So, what is this i after all? Is integral, so let us consider in particular case when t3 is between t1 and t2. So it's omega 1. Okay, so if this is clear, so then I'll write this integral. As you see, it's all, it's actually looks like instanton. It happened at T3, this lambda jump. So I'll write omega one of x zero. Okay, psi zero. Then I have this jump and I have omega two x0 plus lambda psi 0 and I integrate over dx0 d psi0. So this is exactly i depending on lambda t1, t2, t3, omega 1, omega 2. Okay? It's a good expression. So now, the derivative of E with respect to lambda equals C 
four. T three less than T two. You see what's going on. However, if opposite happens, in the opposite case, not, not, nothing happens. There is no lambda. That's why P is D over DX naught. Is D over DX. You see how it works. So you may say that it is not fair to put here delta function because how can we study theories with delta function? We can smooth it. We can replace P of T3 by something regularized. P times sine omega. depending on T and T3. And I want this omega to look like this. So in this case, trajectory would not be that sharp. Trajectory would be smooth. So the answer would be the same. Such momenta placed before or after the coordinate observable produce derivative. Okay? <clears throat> and if you properly study what actually happens here, you would be able to reconstruct the operator structure of uh, quantum mechanics. Exactly the Hamiltonian picture that I wrote. So once again, no H bar parameter here at all. There is no H bar here. One thing. Then P goes to D over DX, no to H D over DX. And we are able to reproduce this P observable. So when we are able to reproduce P observable, we of course know how to reproduce P squared. P square of T3 is, of course, P of T3, P of T3 prime, and then you need to take a limit when T3 prime goes to T3. But what is important is that when you try to take this limit, you will lose your isentonic representation. That's why. This is very hard to exponentiate. It means that in isentonic theory, you cannot get
this. Cannot get this. Here we definitely have the smart integral. However, what you can get, however, expansion. Okay. In order to get one over two m expansion, you need to take it out of the integral. Compute correlators and integrate. So what can you actually have is This correlator you can have it. Now, let us recall where the metric is here. Once again, I'll write it in this way. In two-dimensional case, it will be called alpha prime. So what you can get here? from instantaneous calculus. You may get alpha prime expansion or large or large volume expansion. Okay. When I say expansion, it means that I would like to differ it from the point of large volume limit. You can get all perturbative terms. So, and I'll proceed with two dimensional example just after the five minutes break, right?
Okay. L let me try to continue. Okay. Donald? Yes. Pasha? Uh, yeah. So now, now you, it's better if you ask some questions and then uh, I'll uh, cover the two-dimensional case. For I the first a, time. Okay. I have a question that's from more or less from still the last time is, is uh, well, you had your list of examples, one, one prime, two, and three of uh, HT QFTs, uh, HT QMs. Um, yeah. So Witten's deformation uh, between, is it between example one and two? Yes. Uh, Witten's deformation is exactly example between it's a deformation between examples one and two. I mean, Witten's uh, Morse theory, 1982 paper. Yes, yes. So should we then think of it as a one-dimensional version of mirror symmetry? Uh, no, because one-dimensional version of mirror symmetry is, uh, is different. A one-dimensional version of mirror symmetry is between one and one prime. Two and one prime. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, between uh, sorry between two and one prime. Mm -hmm. Okay. But is is there a one-dimensional mirror symmetry? What? But is there such a thing a one-dimensional mirror symmetry? Yes. Mm -hmm. So in order, as far as I understand, uh, in order to get it properly, you need to you need to get in, in dimension one some structures that secretly know about the second dimension. Oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, but mm -hmm. the theory still but the theory would look as as one dimensional. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, it is more or less what happens in this uh, BCOV theory. So we, we will come to it. So BCV theory is very high dimensional. It's, uh, it's like... very high dimensional as a field theory. However, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a field theory. That's why it's a theory of particles and particles. And we have mirror symmetry on particles. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, but uh, you see, in order, I think that in order to understand all this, I should uh, go uh, in direct order, mm -hmm. you see, I, I, explaining what I mean by this and by that. Mm -hmm. So I actually was trying to surprise you that uh, it is possible to get commutator of P and X without having infinite dimensional integrals. Because uh, people used to say that in order to get this px commutator you need something not classical so it's wrong mm -hmm. in this theory you get this px commutator equals one without any h bar What you start to call H bar comes when you rescale this field P. And you'll get H bar somewhere here. So if P equals P tilde, divided by H, okay? So then this terrible expression would look like so 
if you do it like this, then p tilde x commutator is of course h bar, right? In terms of p tilde variables, you will have here p tilde x dot i over h plus gij pi tilde here we also have tilde divided by h bar squared okay It looks weird, yes? So, I can put it this way. It still looks a bit weird. If you integrate things out, but if you integrate things out, you would still get so it doesn't matter which field you are integrating out. It's a Gaussian integral. So here will be inverse metric. H comes here. Here is H downstairs. I just want to say that it's very non-natural way to treat things. You see where to put H bar. It's much better for me to keep this normalization, that is geometrical normalization. If you integrate things out here, you will get M X dot squared GIJ. That's it. And then you can say, let us divide by H, multiply it by H. Hmm? So, th so this is what actually happens. This is the proper normalization. Once again, here I am rescaling only P. I'm not rescaling X. You cannot rescale X. X is a coordinate. P is something linear. You can rescale it. Okay, so you may play with it. For me, it's better to keep things like this. Okay. Why 
when people are doing sigma model, they consider this metric depending on x. Then they can say that constant metric plus this is a free, is a quadratic, a metric that, uh, that is not constant or perturbation. And they are doing some theory. However, uh, to treat such models uh, using conventional Gaussian integrals is very unnatural because uh, there is no natural linear structure on X. X is a coordinate on something curved. The main advantage of this instantonic series is that while you are doing things, you never pick up a local coordinate as a target space. It's an invariant thing. You see? So like I studied correlator of uh, P, It's this thing that you should put at point that I call T3. And this is an observable parameterized by V. And in order to compute correlation of such observable, it's enough to say that you have trajectory, you see, maybe even constant trajectory. Okay, well, like before. You have a trajectory, then you have a jump, put here a lambda. And then this jump in the target is just a vector field. So if lambda is small, it means that in the target you have trajectory that jumps on lambda v. That's it. You don't need to pick up any coordinates. You see, this is not a nice picture. You can keep, you can put here v background. I call it V B, V background. Then your trajectories would look like you go with the background vector field, then you have this lambda jump on V, and then you continue with the V background. So these are the form trajectories. They are very easily and explicitly defined. Using this, you can prove that OV1, OV2 commutator is, of course, OV1, V2. And this statement has nothing to do with the choice of coordinates. It's invariant. Okay. I hope that tomorrow I'll say some, some more about it. But now I want to say that all this is not to study one dimensional theory. All this is to study, of course, two dimensional theory. So main equation x dot equals to zero 
or k x dot goes to the trajectory of the vector field is replaced by the holographicity equation that is of course perturbed So, Andre, in this discussion of this jump by lambda, so lambda was infinitesimal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can have it big if you wish. But then you but need a metric on the target. To, it infinitesimal. to have it big, you need a metric on the target to make things well defined. This lambda. No, uh, metric is not metric is not needed. No, otherwise you, do, you don't really need how to, what does it mean to shift by lambda times a, times a tangent vector? Uh, I, I, it's, no, it, it, it's clear. So what, what you do? You go with the help of the, with the background field. It could be ah. zero. Ah, no, okay, and okay, okay. Then at some point, you start to go during the time lambda along the trajectory of the vector field V. No, yeah, I agree. Sorry, sorry, yes. And then you proceed with the V background. Mm -hmm. So since uh, you need infinitesimal, you don't even need this V to have well-defined trajectories. Mm -hmm. It could be a field that blows up at the final point. Okay. However, infinitesimal, it makes sense. So lambda is the time when you evolute according to this field V. Mm -hmm. And then, you continue to evolute according to the field V background. So this is this modified trajectory. Mm -hmm. And then you evaluate whatever you have on this modified trajectory and take derivative with respect to lambda. No, okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I'm going to dimension two. And at dimension two, of course, my main example would be this one. So here I have anti-holomorphic derivative. Okay. Here I have zero, one, four. And here I have a vector field. I prefer not to have the background field in this case, but uh, but this is the main equation. Then I'll use the complex form of Matai equation, and I'll get the well-known action. Sorry. Last fermion. Plus, of course, the term with a Keller metric. Sorry, not with a Keller, with the Hermitian metric. With the epsilon here. If I integrate this epsilon out, I will get not the integrating P out. So these P as are one zero forms, and this is zero one form. I will get, of course, this expression and here i see that epsilon 
is what people on string theory are calling alpha prime. Almost. Because people say that it's not the expression that they used to write down in string theory. They actually have something symmetric. So you can do the following. First, take G IG bar to be here. Without Planck constants. Then this form could be rewritten as So here is a plus or minus sign, I don't remember. But it will be minus, maybe one half. So this is the standard form. And this term is called theta term in physics. So here, this theta term is not imaginary, but real. And uh, also, if you want to take epsilon to zero, you need to take it to infinity. So this is the model. However, if you are in the fixed instantonic sector, this is a number for a given instanton number because it is, the, it is given by the topological class of the map sigma. So that's it. This is how you see a relation between the two-dimensional A model, which is this one, and the conventional sigma model. And of course, uh, the interesting thing to do is to compute two things. First, consider so-called evaluation observables. Like before, omegas, on x is x bar, psi, psi bar at z, okay? Let us call these o omega observables. So it's interesting to compute. In this case, it would, it would not be a product anymore. It's interesting. This thing would have instantonic corrections. It's because previously, the instantons were basically mapped to a point. And now there are various kinds of wrappings that you can have. And these things may be studied explicitly. Let me give an example. So instant on without lambda deformation. 
would be something like this. I'll put your point W. And here is the cost of C. You plug this Z here and integrate over constants W1, W2, and you get something. It is definitely the formation of the ring, uh, of the Ram ring. So it's actually very interesting to compute, and nobody, as far as I know, computed it. Only cohomology. So people computed cohomology, the formation of ring of cohomology, but not the ring itself. So it's one thing that you can do. And the other thing that you can do is, of course, to study lambda deformation. So what is this? D bar x equals what? equals omega bar for the simplest case. Just imagine that this omega bar is localized at some point Z1. How can you solve this equation? And here is lambda. Of course, you can solve it saying that here is the green function, All right? So x should approximately go like lambda z minus z1 plus something like zero mode that you would like to integrate. So here are your parameters. So in this way, you can find taking derivative of a lambda that this correlator goes like one over z minus z1. So you're getting OPE here. You are getting it for nothing just by deforming the main instantonic equation. You have a key. Moreover, this expression could be written down not only for a flat case where target is C. You can put here any complex variety. And this, I think, claim. This is a proper version of curved beta gamma system. And you have enormous amount of examples of conformal field theories that are parameterized by what? By complex target spaces. You have many things to compute there. Okay, so I think that we will come to this issue later on. You can also compute energy momentum tensor out of this because this D bar has a parameter, complex structure. You change complex structure, you see the reaction. Okay, so that's how instantonic theory come into the game and that's how they solve two problems simultaneously. First problem is uh, basically it's the same problem. 
how to treat the code space without choosing local coordinates. Like this. Everything here is geometric. You do not have to choose the coordinates on the target space. Therefore, you automatically have uh, a theory that is invariant under diffeomorphisms of the target. This invariance is actually built in. So would you choose uh, uh, local coordinates? Suppose you choose local coordinates, you quantize, then you need to show that uh, with different local coordinates, you get the same result. Here, this invariance is automatic. The price you have to pay for this is that you actually have supersymmetric theory, okay? You have both bosons and fermions. And what you would like to call bosonic theory would be a subsector of this theory. That's interesting. Just compare it with uh, how would you treat Laplacian in the example one that we are not still working out yet. You want to understand Laplacian. It is better to understand it on the space of differential forms. And after you understand it on the space of differential forms, you would say, oh, I have an idea. The functions are decoupled from the rest. So this, what I'd like to call uh, bosonic theory. But actually, the space of all forms contains fermions. So here, something similarly happened. We studied the one-dimensional example. And on this one-dimensional example, of course, the natural object was the lead derivative. And lead derivative is, of course, defined on the space of forms. But when you have done the procedure, you can say, oh, come on. Lead derivative takes uh, functions into functions. So let me forget about differential forms. And in this way, I will get the theory on functions only. So here, something similar may happen. That sometimes you may uh, subtract what you would like to call bosonic sector. However, know that uh, if something is purely bosonic in one coordinate system, it is not bosonic in, in another coordinate system. Let me give you an example. So once again, we have what corresponds to the vector field. It's expression like okay, something like this. You may say, oh, I don't like this fermion. Let me consider something where there is no fermions. So there is no fermions when vector field is constant in terms of coordinate x. However, this notion depends on the coordinate system. In one coordinate system, you have just this. In another coordinate system, you have theory with fermions. So the issue how to properly extract purely bosonic system out of this system, when it is a subsystem, we have not solved, but we tried. Okay, I am more or less trying to keep track of the time. Okay, 
Now my time is over. So you may ask questions now, or you may ask questions uh, tomorrow. Everything would be as scheduled. Okay. So I only apologize for uh, five minutes uh, extra continuation at the end of the second section. I will try to be sharp. Okay. You may ask now, you may ask tomorrow. You may write to me. Okay. So, so you have uh, references for your talk. I guess you have a number of papers in uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, I have a number of papers. So if you, uh, so if you type Lost of Franklin Nikrasov, <coughs> you will find uh, like uh, either three or four papers. Okay. But I'm trying to explain the idea. You see, th 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 these papers are kind of lengthy. Yes. So no, no, nobody is reading uh, 100 page uh, papers without uh, without special need. <laughs> so uh, I act here I actually gave you the main ideas. Actually, you don't need the rest. The, the, the rest are just um, are just technical things. Okay, there are some formulas that you can get. It's they are interesting, but uh, the issue is here. So in the papers, we actually considered the supersymmetric mechanics like Morse and uh, uh, we evaluated things on instantons, find, found interesting formulas. We can go into it, but it's not the main intention right now. So Edward Frankel uh, even wrote these formulas on the body in his movie about love and mathematics. But uh, it's not the formulas that I would like to stress on here. I'm trying to stress on the ideas that it's possible to define quantum field theory based on the system of equations in two dimensions like this. So it's a it's, uh, free theory. Or if you want something not free, then the system of equations would be like more complicated. So how to write it? So lambda one a a means that you have different types of vector fields. One means that you put it at point uh, z one. Okay, I'll write uh, the unified formula here. Here I put index M. So you need to work out this double sum. Finite number of points, finite number of vector fields. Solve this equation perturbatively in lambda. These are instantons. X depending on 
lambda and a and also the one the n. You see it has a lot of parameters parameters. Plug it. So take this instanton, evaluate on this instanton differential forms, integrate, differentiate, you get correlators. No infinities. Everything is well defined. <coughs> the only potential infinities come from the region when instantons become small. It's interesting to study these divergences too. So this is proper uh, Grom of Witten theory. And of course, it is very needed to get uh, Donaldson Witten theory in the same form. Because it is also the first order system. It's also in Stantonic theory. Okay. That, that's it for today. I think it would be proper to say thank you to the audience. See you tomorrow. So, see you. So, Donald, may I, may I ask you to properly save yes. the recording yes, for I European do. purposes? And if somebody is recording uh, in China, it would be also good to save it. So, mm -hmm.